I'm finally back after the weekend to bring you my review of the past 3 days of Stage 2's second week. Again, apologies for not being able to upload the past couple of days, but I do want to quickly thank everyone for the support of late, which has been great. That said, I've now caught up on the matches and ready to give you my brief review of each one before looking at how my predictions fared, which I've been posting on Twitter in my absence, so let's get straight into it. Day 2 of Week 2 kicked off with a very intriguing contest that saw the Atlanta Reign, who have been struggling to find their feet since the loss of Dufran, go up against the LA Valiant, who are still in search for their first victory after 8 consecutive losses this season. This series went back and forth between the sides, and despite LA taking Li Zhang early, Atlanta were able to pull themselves back thanks to some huge bombs from Freed and a dominating Rhyme performance from Pogbo, as the Reign convincingly took Assault and Hybrid to lead 2-1 going into Junkertown. On this map however, the Valiant rallied to firstly finish the map before having an excellent hold in the first section that ultimately proved crucial as they won the final teamfight in overtime at the end to tie the series of 2-2 and send us to a map 5 on Busan. Both teams seemed evenly matched throughout, but I thought it was KSF who was ultimately having the greater impact on Zarya over the course of the series ahead of Baby Bay, and this proved to be true on this final map as Baby Bay made a costly mistake that cost his side round 1 as KSF flourished. In the end, in spite of the rain levelling the map, LA came out of clutch in the final teamfight to finally clinch their first victory of the season 3-2 and put a greater spotlight on Atlanta's problems without Dufran and with Daco out of his side. Following this series was another which I watched with interest as the Boston Uprising, who were coming off two reverse sweeps last week, took on the forever inconsistent Hangzhou Spark. Over the course of the series, it appeared that the Mirror 3-3 GOATS comps were quite squarely matched and as such both sides took a round each on Oasis, before the Spark threw a spanner into the GOATS machine by running a Bastion Bunker comp with Crystal on the deciding round that caught Boston off guard as they couldn't really find a response and found themselves again down early. This messy finish continued into Anubis where both teams found themselves having to slowly break down defensive bunker comps and mainly due to their greater time bank after completing the map first time round, the uprising edged out the map to finally take a map in the first half as they were level at the break. The back and forth between the two sides continued into Blizzard World, with the Sombras, RCK and Godspeed taking control, but it was a recent pick up for Boston who once again showed his value as he just proved to be slightly more dominant as for once his side had a lead going into the final map. Crystal, who had been benched after map 1, came back into the side and this seemed to spur on his team as they dominated Junkertown, first shutting down a feeble uprising attack before convincingly reaching their target to take us to second game 5 of the day. Unsurprisingly, this came down to the last round on Li Zhang and it appeared that the fight was going in Boston's favour until a massively clutch boot from IDK at the bridge stopped Carlehex from returning with Grav as the Spark were able to swing the momentum and take the map and thus the series 3-2 putting an end to Boston's Map 5 heroics and finally showing off some of Hangzhou's quality that hasn't been coming together up to now. I'll keep my comments of the rematch between the Guangzhou Charge and San Francisco Shock rather brief as it was another similar tale following last week's demolition. Again, the Shock held no punches, fielding their strongest side and it showed as they simply outclassed and dominated their opponents to a simple 4-0 victory. What concerned me more was that the only objectives that the charge were able to take were on Paris in overtime. Otherwise, their offence was convincingly stopped on attack each time, most notably on Gibraltar where the card travelled a mere 40 metres. This team showed glimpses of potential at points on defence, with San Francisco having the occasional trip up, but whilst the Shock are riding high towards the playoffs again, Guangzhou are quickly falling towards the bottom end of the league despite some obvious talent that many had high hopes for in the preseason. Day 2 concluded with the Chengdu Hunters vs the Shanghai Dragons in an entertaining matchup of the Chinese teams. To many people's surprise though, it was the Dragons who made the strongest start on Li Zhang, with Ding the standout on Farah, as Shanghai took an early 1-0 lead. The Hunters woke up on Paris, which also saw Yang Xiaolong make his debut as they completely stuffed the Dragons attack before easily capping the first tick to tie up the series 1-1 at the half time. Although, after the break, again Chengdu were the poorer of the two sides, particularly towards the final parts of the map. Even though they were able to make it through the first two points of King's Row and then Junkertown, on both occasions the Dragons were simply stronger 
and heavily punished the hunters when they ran into the mirror free free goats which resulted in them taking the free one upset. This steadied the ship after a tough last week but also brought Chengdu back down to earth after an impressive past week as well as for once they could not live up to the fans expectations. Day 3 began with the second rematch of last seasons grand final between the London Spitfire and the Philadelphia Fusion with the Fusion coming out on top in last staged meeting. Unlike the day before, both sides favoured the GOATS matchup in contrast to the large number of DPS and bunker comps that we've been seeing up to this point, and it was Prophet and Gesture who took full advantage of this as they dominated their matchups against Carpe and Sado, as the Spitfire went up 1 0 early. The momentum appeared to be riding with London as they clinically pushed through Hanamura to leave them with an impressive 5 minutes remaining whereas Philly only just managed to squeak to a 2 point completion in overtime. Yet, despite having 5 minutes to take one tick, the Fusion kicked up another gear and extraordinarily managed to hold on for a draw, but this now meant they could not drop another map. Blizzard World proved to be another tight affair, with London finishing the map with no time after getting stalled for a long time at point A until a Bob Ultimate from Birdring finally broke through the Philly defence. In reply, the Fusion comfortably rolled through the map and completed it with over 2 minutes left, but like the Spitfire, almost threw away their chance to take the first tick before clutching out in the last teamfight to level the series as both teams headed into a must win map on Rialto. I thought Poco had another good day on D.Va, but his counterpart Fury turned up in the critical moments on this map. It came down to the final fight as he picked off Sado before hitting a massive 4 man D.Va bomb to give his side the 2 1 victory but the main takeaway for both teams needed to be an overall improvement in consistency, with the series at times looking very sloppy, with both sides throwing away good opportunities and positions given to them. The Vancouver Titans looked to extend their winning streak in their next match that was against the Houston Outlaws, and the first map really took people by surprise. For as much criticism as I've given Raukas for his terrible Zen play, his Anna looked very good on Basan but it was his DPS duo that stole the show, with Arhan and Lynxa first on Tracer and Widow, but then on Torb and Soldier, tearing the 3-3 of Titans apart, they just seemed to have no reply to the triple DPS of Houston as they took a shock 1-0 lead. This hope soon faded, as they confusingly opted into the mirror Goats comp on attack that got stuffed before a Haxel Symmetra on attack combined with a bumper charge quickly leveled the series at 1-1 after they took Paris. The Outlaws rebounded after the break from an impressive Sombra Goats defence, with Dante causing Vancouver lots of issues as they were stopped before reaching the second point, but from here on out it was never played again as they mirrored the Titans and consequently lost with Bumper getting into his groove with a nasty display. This continued onto the final map as Vancouver locked up the series 3-1 with a great defensive effort on Rialto, so they put to one side this rough match, but the series felt like a what if scenario for Houston who perhaps should have stayed on triple DPS or Sombra Goats to find success rather than opt into the mirror matchup they were almost certainly going to lose. Note finally got to make his debut after his trade from Boston as the Dallas Fuel faced the Toronto Defiant and Dallas had clearly seemed to use time from last stage to really tighten up the team as well as highlight that Note was more flexible than many people had originally thought. The Fuel dominated the opening map Oasis with Toronto coming unstuck by some poor coordination has been noticeable from the side since the start of his stage, as they found themselves down a map early. Paris was a long back and forth map with both sides completing the map twice, as the usual suspects for both sides were able to pop off with Ivy and Envy coming in clutch for the Defiant, whilst AKM was clearly feeling good on the Widowmaker. In the end though, Dallas were just quicker and in their extra time bank took the deciding point camp with triple DPS to take a 2-0 lead into the break. After this however, the match just seemed to completely go in the Fuel's favour, as on both King's Row and Rialto, Toronto just could not respond to the Goats and Sombra Goats of Dallas, with AKM and OGE standing out as they completed both maps. The Defiant looked sorry in their attack on King's Row, so they were full held, and if it wasn't for a 6 man EMP from Envy, it could have been worse on Rialto, but partly thanks to a huge 4 kill Diva Bomb from Note, which took more time off the clock, Toronto were held at the end of Rialto as Dallas picked up the 4-0 victory and welcomed themselves as true contenders for a playoff push, whilst Toronto continued to look shaky with their toughest schedule. Concluding Day 3 was a series between the LA Gladiators and the Guangzhou Charge, 
And again, I'll apologise to Charge fans, as I'll keep this as brief as the team recorded what I feel is like their fourth or fifth consecutive 4-0 defeat. To their credit, they put up a much greater fight than they did against the Shock in the past two weeks, with Hopper again showing his prowess and flexing onto Farah. But ultimately, they just could not stop the free free goats of the Gladiators, but had little trouble rolling all over them, with Decay unchallenged, whilst I thought Big Goose and Void also had very impressive series. This convincing victory firmly shows that LA are dead set on making their way into the playoffs, whilst the charge confirmed they are now in a crisis that needs immediate work, with their season now also beginning to slip away from their grasp. Now we finally reach yesterday's matches, which begin with two sides looking quite strong in this meta and looking to make playoff pushes, with the Dallas Fuel taking on the Paris Eternal. Following on from their impressive display the day before, it was Paris who came out the strongest side on Basan, with AKM and Note impressing on the tank line, but it was OGE who was the standout as he dominated LH Cloudy all day in his player of the match performance. They quickly and convincingly took map 1 before the two sides brawled on the map Paris. Both teams completed the map before holding each other on point A, with Soon and Danye combining well on the Bastion and Sombra before they were bashed by OG's Winston on their own attack, but surprisingly this map ended as a draw. With the Eternal needing to avoid defeat on Blizzard World, it did not look good for them as the fuel burned through their own attack on Goats having 3 minutes left and in reply Paris only managed to have 30 seconds left. They could do nothing with the time they had left and consequently had to hold point A to prevent the loss. Alas, two minutes into their attack, Dallas perfectly executed the coordination of their ultimates to wipe the Eternal and confirm the series at 2-0. This left Rialto as a map for differential and pride, and Paris to their credit turned up a gear. Finzi came up clutch with diva bombs and a big grab eat near the end of Dallas's attack, but the Eternal had little trouble in reaching, with two minutes left halfway through the map, with an ult combo to win the map and narrow the loss to 2-1. This keeps Paris still in a decent position to push for playoffs, and whilst it continues this perfect start to stage 2 for Dallas, it showed some areas for improvement for them to work on if they want to show that they are the real deal this stage. The Atlanta Reign after their recent poor form looked to be in another dogfight, this time against Washington Justice. This series was fun but sloppy, and unlike the tank v tank duels that dominated a lot of games in the week, this match was much more centred around the performances of DPS players. Cory, as usual, popped off again for the Justice, and it was his Bastion performance alongside a barrage of ultimates that allowed them to pick up Paris, but before that on Bassan, it was behind Erster's brick that Atlanta's 3-3 proved too strong as the halftime score read one apiece. Addo and Cory again caused a few problems after the break. One of the biggest issues for Washington all season long has been turning these positive moments into substantial objectives and progress that they can properly build on and play around. Eichenwald perfectly showed this, as they were abruptly held at the castle doors, before Erster got a disgusting 6k on Tracer after 4 kills from a pulse bomb that completely shattered the Justice defence and was the foundation from which Atlanta were able to grab a hold of the momentum once more in this series. The final map Rialto showed that the rain were at times being able to show some good coordination as it completed the map, but this was met in kind by Washington, who as they improve are now contesting these series more regularly but their second attack was quickly stifled and the defence removed to give Atlanta the much needed 3-1 win and take a little bit of pressure off their shoulders as the team has taken a major step back from last stage. Game 3 of this final day saw another blowout, this time between the New York Excelsior and the Florida Mayhem. Clearly wanting to get back home and watch Game of Thrones, the Excelsior did not mess around with their top players such as Mano, Mecco and Jonak decimating Florida, whose own all-Korean roster simply didn't stand much of a chance. Zephyr again was terrible, as no one really had a decent day, despite a couple of highlight reel moments from a couple of individuals on the Florida side. There wasn't really anything else to take away from this series, other than the facts that New York are once again dominant in the regular season, and that Florida should basically see this season as over, and look to lay the groundwork for their season 3 next year. Week 2 of Stage 2 concluded with the battle for Los Angeles as the LA Valiant took on the LA Gladiators, with some pretty fun Twitter beef prior to this match adding some extra spice. Hot on the back of their first victory, the Valiant looked invigorated with this performance, but simply struggled to match up to the quality on display from the Gladiators, who went 1-0 up quickly after Li Zhang. Hanamura told a very different and weird story as we had a tie with both sides full holding point B, 
though it did almost seem like the gladiators weren't taking their attack super seriously, but regardless they led at the half. Eichenwald looked to be a must win for the Valiant, but some undisciplined cost them as they seen 9 their attack before the gladiators punished them with an efficient offence with Void again having a really nice map and series, with some well timed diva bombs as they locked up the series 2-0. Therefore, Rialto was purely for pride and despite only reaching the end of the second section, the Valiant put on a tremendous defence at the beginning of the map with Space coming in clutch with some needed diva bomb kills so they were able to take the map and similarly to the Dallas Paris series, weaken their opponents victory with a final score of 2-1. This reaffirms the improvement that the Valiant have made this week alongside their first victory, whilst also dampening the Gladiators still unbeaten stage 2 record with a little recognition they should take things perhaps a little more seriously moving forward. After a very good 14-2 record last week, I somehow managed to almost match it again with another impressive week to record of the 13-3 record to take my total this stage to 27-5. Day 2 saw my worst performance as I was among many who picked Boston and Chengdu and was penalised for it following impressive performances from Hangzhou and Shanghai. My only other incorrect prediction this week came from the London vs Philly match and I have Fury's massive 4k bomb to thank for it, and what otherwise was a very close series. On the whole though, I think the matches this week highlighted how the level of competition is quite narrow right now between a lot of the teams, which is making matches a little more competitive as a result. And with that, I'd like to thank you for watching. My power rankings as usual will be out at some point tomorrow, maybe quite late. And on that note, do you guys think it's time for the University of Waterloo to gain a place? Anyways, if you enjoyed please like and subscribe for continuing Overwatch League coverage and content.